Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We welcome you all to Mahindra Life Space Developers Limited Q2 FY24 Earnings Conference Call. On the call, we have with us today Mr. Amit Sena, MD and CEO, Mr. Vimal Agarwal, CFO, and Mr. Ravindra Basu, Head of Investor Relations. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during this conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchtone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Amit Sena, MD and CEO, Mahindra Lifespace Developers Limited. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you. Um, good morning, everyone, and welcome to our quarter two financial year 2024 earnings call. At the outset, uh, I would like to welcome uh, everybody for the call uh, and thank everyone for participating. Also, my best wishes for, for Dasra uh, and Diwali. Uh, also, best wishes to India for the World Cup uh, for all of our collective behalf. Uh, let me cover a few things very quickly. Uh, I'll cover a few uh, highlights that we are seeing in the industry overall. Uh, we'll quickly cover uh, three tips on the resi size. Um, the launches that we have done are in the process of uh, uh, gearing ourselves for the H2, the highlights of business development, uh, the update on the ICIT side, and I'll then request Vimal to jump in for the financial split. Um, so those are the few topics that I'll, I'll quickly cover along with uh, Vimal. So let me just start with uh, industry very quickly. Uh, we continue to see uh, uh, a huge amount of momentum in the real estate industry. Uh, I would call it a purple patch for the industry, uh, given multiple strong drivers in the market. Uh, the macros are strong. The GDP growth is contributing significantly. The per capita income, the per household income, etc., are driving the growth. Post-COVID, we have seen a significant interest in home buying. Uh, not only in buying home, but also buying larger homes. So upgrades are also becoming a key part of the uh, buying behavior. Uh, typically, the industry, uh, real estate industry, has six to eight year cycle. We are second, we finished two years into it, you know, entering the third year. So it has many years uh, to go. Uh, we continue to see steady uh, demand growth across the markets. Uh, one of the interesting things that we track on a monthly basis, the investment uh, inventory overhang across each of the key markets, and that continues to reduce. Um, you know, that's very interesting because this year is going to be a strong year. We've probably crossed 5 lakh, maybe even more 5 like 50,000 units, but the inventory overhang continues to come down, uh, which is healthy for the industry. Just as a comparison, China uh, in the, the best years had one crore homes, so 20 times more homes were sold uh, in China as a reference. So we have a huge amount of uh, headroom to grow as a country, as a, a real estate industry. Um, typically, the industry contribution uh, is 12 to 14 percent in developed, more developed markets. India's contribution uh, from real estate industry is up to 7 to 8 percent. So we expect that contribution to go up significantly. Um, and the expectation from many sources is that from 250, 260 billion dollar industry that it is today, primarily residential, will become a trillion dollar industry uh, by 2030. Just for reference, China was uh, 500 odd billion in 2009. China was uh, uh, two trillion dollars in 2019, and there has been a lot of uh, challenges with uh, Evergrande and Country Garden since then. But it shows you the kind of the size that you can expect in a country of China's size or India's size. So huge headroom for growth. We also see a lot of uh, uh, flight to quality um, that, uh, that signifies that branded players, listed players like us, uh, would benefit from the governance thresholds that have been put in place, the regulatory improvements, statutory norms that have been put in place. We'll continue to, um, continue to leverage that to our advantage. Uh, so the flight to quality is a key part of how the industry is shaping. So that's one quick uh, first point on the industry. 
Uh, coming to uh, Mahindra Life Spaces, on the sales side, especially on the residential side, uh, we have achieved a quarterly pre-sale of 455 crores uh, versus uh, last quarter to 399 crores, so some improvement there. On a half yearly basis, we stood at 800 crores um, for the first half of this year. Compared to H1, uh, this last year, H1 last year was 1,000 odd crores. Um, Important point to note here is that our H1 2024 sustainable so sales contributed more than 80% of this 800 crore versus last year H1 sales where we had reported pre-sales of 1,001 crore with almost 80% coming from new launches. So the mix of sale has, uh, is, is uh, very different in this, um, this uh, first half of this year. Um, uh, and this fundamentally reaffirms the fact that strong brand coupled with solid on-ground distribution um, and deeper relations with channel partners will keep us in good shape as we get in H2 with a series of new launches planned. I had in the last call, I promised nine uh, launches. We have uh, done one in quarter one, one in quarter two, um, and then just in this month, October month, we've done the third launch. But we have a series of launches planned later in the year, and I'll touch upon them. Uh, but as, as I mentioned earlier, having a strong engine uh, distribution channel partner and the brand allows us to capture um, not only sustainable sales but also the sales that come as a result of new launches. So strong, uh, strong, uh, strong um, pipeline and plan. Let me touch upon the part three, which is the launches. Um, um, as I mentioned, our uh, first plotted redevelopment or plotted development was launched at the end of quarter one in Chennai. Um, we had never done a horizontal development before received a phenomenal response. It was launched at the end of June. So most of the impact was only seen in uh, quarter two of this financial year. Um, we sold 85% uh, of our inventory in the, in, in the first three months, uh, 244 plots out of 282. Uh, at the end of Q2, we launched uh, phase three of our happiness authority project in Pune. Uh, we are seeing very strong momentum. I'll share more details in subsequent calls. Uh, we also we will see a fairly busy um, H2 in terms of launches. Um, some of the launches were uh, delayed because of statutory and regulatory requirements, some Supreme Court rulings, rulings about the, the RG area on Mother Earth, etc. Uh, so they have deferred, uh, but we'll expect code name Malgudi in Bangalore uh, very soon. Uh, province in Kandivali, Happiness Kalyan to Phase 2, uh, Happiness Palgar to uh, phase 2.2, and a code name Navy, which is a redevelopment project. And then um, we might have a, a delay in one of the other redevelopment, but to make it up, we are uh, fast track uh, two or three of other projects so that we, uh, what we have committed to you now in terms of launches, nine launches this financial year, we should be able to uh, achieve that without, uh, without any uh, problem. Um, we also just last week did an industry first launch of uh, our uh, a very exciting project that you know of Citadel, phase two, uh, was launched through Metaverse uh, you know, with uh, very exciting uh, uh, new technology trends through 500 drones that uh, lit up the sky with a lot of exciting ways to understand the market, understand the customers, and understand the creative pull, uh, pull factor from the customers. Um, it's been very well received by channel partners and customers alike. So we hope to see uh, more such uh, exciting things to come from MLDL uh, in future launches as well. Um, let me come the, cover the next part, which is part four, business development. Uh, continue our business development effort. We continue to maintain a very healthy BD pipeline of uh, 5,000 to 6,000 pro. Um, as, as just to highlight a point around the Navy redevelopment project, we had acquired the project in April of this year. We got all the documents uh, in our hands end of, uh, end of April. Uh, but um, as of last Friday, uh, the, the, the development agreement has been signed by uh, 170 flat owners. 135 plus registration was done uh, on Friday itself. Um, this is one of the fastest redevelopment uh, uh, market, bring to market effort that I've seen. Uh, and we, we are very thankful to the society members who also showed 
the speed that we want to demonstrate from our side. And really hope to bring this to market in the financial year itself. In the financial year itself. Uh, we also want to highlight one of the um, acquisitions that we did. It didn't happen exactly in quarter two or H2. It happened uh, 10 days, 12 days later. Uh, we acquired a, a land parcel, uh, 5.4 acres in Waguli, Pune, which has a development potential of 1.5 million square foot saleable area. Um, you know, Pune continues to be a strong market for us. Um, and this acquisition gives us the opportunity to leverage our brand um, in the in the micro market that we were not present. So this will allow us to participate on the eastern side of the Pune um, um, Pune city area. We will see the launch of the same project in the next four to six weeks. Um, that's the speed we want to have for uh, as many of our launches uh, as much as possible. Uh, as we uh, uh, go forward, the pipeline looks very strong. Um, our much awaited Pane land has seen a phenomenal boost in development potential, which I touched upon in the last call. We are in the process of getting uh, a, a set of approvals that allows to uh, get us ready for a launch uh, likely next financial year. So that's on the business development side. Let me also quickly cover the final part from my side, um, IC and IC business update. Um, uh, IC, as you know, is a lumpy business. We had a, uh, as, we, as anticipated, uh, we, will, we, had a, we had a very strong H2 of last financial year, and H1 of this one was a little bit subdued because it's lumpy, it comes in waves, but we are st seeing strong amount of uh, domestic consumption, driven manufacturing, uh, China plus one related opportunities. So we see strong momentum. In fact, we have a healthy pipeline of LOIs which we are in the process of converting slowly and steadily across all over uh, world cities and origin uh, industrial clusters. Um, a few approvals are awaited so that we can close those LOIs into um, the lease opportunity. Uh, we'll keep you updated. Uh, most of that will happen in H2. Uh, I'm hoping that um, when we talk next, you'll, you'll get to hear the momentum, although lumpy in the IC business is getting converted into real opportunity that we'll be able to um, see in the numbers that we put out. So that's on the on the IC side. Um, uh, let me hand over to Vimal for the sixth part, which is the financial part. Thanks, Amit, and good, good morning, everyone. Uh, as you all know, many of our key operating entities from residential side and IC and IC side are not consolidated on a line-on-line -line basis. Uh, moving on to the key numbers here. The consolidated total income is stood at 25.7 crores and against 73.8 crores in Q2 F23. The consolidated debt after non-controlling interest is stood at a loss of 19 crores as against a loss of 7.7 .7 crores in Q2 F23. Your company has a debt of 291 crores at consolidated level while cash in hand and bank balance including investments is at 65 crores. The cost of debt stood at 8.1% on consolidated basis. Our net operating cash flow without land related outflows was 249 crores in H1, reflecting the strong collections in the residential and IC part of our business. Uh, these are few of the key points. I now request if the floor can be open for questions from the participants, please. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. The first question is from the line of Aditya Chattopadhyay from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, good morning, everyone. Uh, so just to start off on the launches, uh, whatever launches we have planned for second half, could you give us some quantification? What is the overall GDP of the cumulative GDP of the launches you are planning? And just to clarify, the redevelopment is on the Santa Cruz project, right, which you touched upon where the signing has happened. Yeah, that's the first question. 
So let me uh, thank Abhijay. I think uh, let me clarify the second part quickly. The signing has happened for the Navy colony in Mala. So where Santa Cruz is, is actually uh, we are working on it. It's two different societies, so amalgamation, the process is slightly longer. So we are still uh, trying to accelerate that, but uh, it is taking more time than we anticipated. But the Navy part is done. Navy was launched. Navy was announced in April, and we have done the uh, done the registration as of last Friday. So hopefully that answers your second part of the question. Um, and coming back to your first part of the question, um, I think the the GDV. So we have um, so we had initially planned nine launches. Um, we have uh, potentially two of those launches may spill over to FY25, and one of them we just talked about uh, Santa Cruz. Might just given the time it's taking to get the the process done. But we have three additional projects that we've added to this year's pipeline itself, um, so that we should hopefully be able to not only meet nine but hopefully uh, do more than nine as part of our uh, our launches this year. Uh, the total GDV from this um, that we are bringing into the market. So let me just clarify: like province will have a 2,500 odd GDV, but we are only bringing the phase one of that launch in this financial year. Next phase, phase two will be in the next financial year. So if I add up all the phases that we have planned, um, so not the whole project in this financial year, it will be between 2,500 to 3,500 crores in GDV for this financial year. Based on the launches. Okay, 2500 to 3500 crores. And sir, Kandivali, when do we see the launch happening? Uh, it will be in, within this quarter or uh, just to towards next quarter? This will likely uh, uh, get to in the next quarter. Um, given uh, we also want to time it and make sure the market is also prepared well. So we are awaiting the approvals. And as you know, we have to redo. A lot of things, given some of the changes that happened, um, most of things are going in the right direction. Uh, even though we might get approval this year, um, which we are hopeful this this this, this quarter, uh, we want some time to warm up the market. So my you know best guess is we want to do it in January rather than uh, this quarter. I don't want to rush into it, given it's a, such an important project for us. Okay, and so just to, to redevelopment for it, so Malad may be launched this year itself, and Santa Cruz next year, right? To so understand correctly. Yes. Yeah. Maybe we are pushing the launch this year. Uh, okay. Venture also we are trying to. Uh, we are not given hope. <laughs> no, we are pushing hard, but uh, just knowing the uh, the process, it might spill into next financial year. Okay, but this 2500 to 3500 is a conservative guidance you are giving, right? Factoring in any uh, delays or uh, this is the what do you say, lower end, upper end? How do we should we look at it? Sorry to press on. <laughs> this is a you know this is a best guess that we have based on the launches we have. 2500 okay. is uh, is on. It, it's a good good. Uh, like last year we did 1812 just for our friends, right? So okay. and sure, sure. here we have 2500 guidance, right? So I think, uh, but launches versus sales conversion, there is a ratio which we'll know depending on the success of the project. Sure, sure, sure. Fine, sir. I'll come back in the queue with more questions. Yeah, all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. Next question is from the man of Pratesh said from Motilal Aswal, please go ahead. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, firstly, on uh, you know business development, so you mentioned about uh, five to six thousand crore pipeline, and I think uh, as per the plans that the company is having of five x growth in five years, I think every year we would we should be doing around uh, you know six thousand odd crore of uh, business development. Uh, so, how is it looking uh, for this year? We have already signed up one project uh, in Pune, uh, but uh, you know, in second half, uh, will this uh, traction be more positive, and uh, will we be achieving this five six thousand crore of BD uh, this year? Yeah. So, thanks, Pratish. I think just want to clarify uh, one thing before I specifically answer the question. This five to six thousand, as I explained in the last call, also excludes. Um, so we have not included Thane, which is 
you know, which has huge potential, but we will target uh, only a fraction of the full FSI potential given it's a beautiful site, uh, it has a lot of trees and greenery that we want to preserve. Um, so we had uh, talked about 8,000 crore just from, just from Thani, 50% uh, residential, 50% commercial. So that is not included in the number that you just mentioned that I mentioned earlier. Um, and uh, we, uh, since I came over, I think we put a huge amount of uh, uh, effort in, uh, in the BD process completely, given where the market is. Um, so a lot of discipline, a lot of efforts and outreach to get to see as many deals that are there in the market. It's good that we are focused on MMR, Pune, and Bangalore, so it allows us to understand the market sentiments and that, you know, how the markets are shaping up really well. Uh, but I just want to be, uh, so we are on track in terms of the volume and the flow of deals that we are seeing. But I'm also very careful about uh, signing the deals that only make sense to us because as you know, the market is so hot, the expectation of landowner in terms of pricing is very different. So I don't want to sign up a deal and then have the winner's curse say, I got the deal, but you know, when I'm bringing them to the market a year or two years later, there is slowdown unanticipated. So just being very careful and disciplined about how we, um, uh, how we triage through the deals, how we filter through the deal economics and make sure that we sign the right deal that makes most sense for us uh, in achieving our aspirations. So three points. One is uh, the Thani part was not included. Second, we see enough flow uh, and of, of the deals across these three markets that allows us to triage through. And third is I want to be very careful on the deals in terms of economics so that we don't sign a deal that is that will cause winners curse. Sure, and beyond the Thane Kandivili like deal, which are large in size, uh, you know, you would be happy to get uh, these uh, about five to eight thousand crore kind of deals, uh, you know, additionally, or uh, for now, since you have Thane and Kandivili in place, uh, you know, uh, those large size deals are uh, like largely out of uh, our contention right now. What's the strategy there? Yeah, so we 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 have a, a good flow of large deals, medium sized deals. You know, we call it mega deals. The Sunny is a mega deal for us. We have category A, category B, and category C. And given the market, we look for all kinds of deals that meet our threshold. So we don't want to do too many small deals. Uh, and then we also don't want to be uh, chasing uh, deals that may not have the economic threshold that we are seeking. So we're always trying to balance that. Um, so as part of that, we will be open to all kinds of deals as long as they make our, uh, make our economics and, and thresholds work. Sure, got it. Uh, just uh, since you touched upon Thane, uh, and you mentioned about uh, you know, that project being ready for launch next year, but, uh, you know, has there been any clarification on, uh, you know, how that 50-50 component is going to, you know, get developed? Uh, uh, I mean, whether uh, it, is, it is supposed to be delivered together or whether it is supposed to start together. Any clarification on that? Yeah, so... And also you can touch upon, uh, you know, the ISER project as well, if, uh, you know, uh, how is the status of approval there? Yeah. Yeah, got it. So let me cover Thane first. Uh, I think a great question actually. That's, uh, that's something we have to carefully plan for. The way the law tells us is that you can sell and construct you know, uh, asynchronously. So they, they can happen at any point of time. But the, the OC part has to be joined together. So I cannot deliver a single square foot of the residential till I have de delivered equivalent uh, square foot of commercial uh, as part of the IT, IITT policy. So even though I can sell earlier, but I have to make sure that they get delivered. And typically the commercial has a shorter construction, two years versus four years for really, we have to plan for that very carefully. And that's why I think, as I mentioned, we are not only getting some approvals uh, to, to make sure that we are fully ready, but also we are commercial point of view, uh, we are thoughtful about working smartly with this constraint in mind. I don't want to start something on Resi till I have some clarity on commercial, at least part of it. We will do it in phases so that we, uh, we are not locked in a situation where our Resi is ready, but we can't offer possession to our customer. 
So that's on the Thane piece. Um, so that's part one. Uh, I think on part two on the Hisa, we have not seen any major improvement um, in uh, in the, the clearances that were required for us to launch the project. Uh, and that's why in the next uh, 30, 60 days, we'll take a decision whether we want to be, um, you know, whether we want to consider including the HISA or we want to drop it uh, for from our pipeline and see when it's ready and then look at other projects also that are that may be more exciting from a timeline point of view. I know they, they may not require this kind of specific approval. Got it. Very clear. And just one last uh, uh, on IC and IC. So I saw uh, some 70 acre decrease in uh, you know SEZ piece in the Jaipur part. Uh, you know uh, that uh, the size of that uh, land has reduced. Uh, any reason uh, for that? You know, uh, just say that question again. It's, you know, I, I think I lost the last part of your question. Uh, sure. Uh, so, yeah, Jaipur was last quarter 2,000 odd acres, somewhat, uh, somewhere around there. Uh, now it is showing as 1,900 acres. And I saw, I mean, uh, in terms of the SEZ part of that land, uh, that has reduced by 70 acres. So any specific reason for you know, that reduction? Yeah, I, I think uh, then. So let me we'll highlight two things. Uh, uh, we we have to always abide by the government rules. So that there is some tweaks that are happening from 65 percent or 67 percent to 65 percent uh, in terms of how much is leasable uh, compared to the cross area. So there is some adjustment that we always do based on the latest and the greatest uh, guidance that we get from the government. Um, and then we have some healthy um, FEZ uh, pipeline also uh, that we are tracking well. We are also looking for some denotification um, that will allow us to, there is more demand on the DTS side compared to FEZ, um, but we will, we will, you know, we'll have to, we'll have to get the right approval before we can talk, uh, talk uh, with, with uh, a lot of confidence. And as you know, the DESH bill, will also hopefully help us, not only help us, but any SEZ uh, um, entity uh, to benefit from um, if that comes into. So we are working with the government or the industry bodies to explain how this should be done, which is equitable for, for all the stakeholders involved. Sure, uh, got it. Uh, that's it from my side. Uh, thank you and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Participants, you may press star in one to ask a question. Next question is from the line of Himanshu Badiai from O3 Portfolio Management Service. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, good morning. My first question was, uh, you stated that the real estate uh, market cycle is now in the third year of a move. Okay. We are seeing prices of uh, residential flats, etc. move up or the end product of okay. And also the price of land has been increasing. How are the basic assumptions like realization, saleable area, and costs, which are also increasing because of inflation, changed in the assumptions what we are making for the projects uh, or we are uh, uh, bidding for? Okay. Can you elaborate on that? And what does it mean for you? Are we still in the spot that uh, the and realizations are much ahead of the land prices and costs, or you think uh, the fine balance is moving on the other way? Some idea. Uh, all the three markets where we are focusing on. Okay. Uh, you want to jump in? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, a couple of points from my side. Uh, one is uh, uh, so far as the realizations are concerned. Uh, as you were mentioning in the last call, uh, we see a lot of uh, discipline, although the trajectory is upwards, uh, but it's not uh, sort of obscene price increases which we are experiencing, but it's in the positive sort of trajectory. Uh, land, uh, yes, continues to be something which is a critical raw material for us, and uh, there is some hardening of pricing which we are experiencing. Uh, at the same time, sort of middle of the penal line, cost lines which are there, Last one and a half years has been much better than what we saw uh, post-pandemic. And to that extent, from say our guardrails perspective, uh, we are looking fairly strong 
uh, across all projects which we are signing up for or the projects which are coming up for launches. Right, Hanif? So I'll just very well. Um, so, Manshu, let me just add two more things. Um, um, so, and there are many more things, and maybe you know we can explain more in detail when we have uh, more time. But I mean, there are a few things that we are trying to do uh, at our end. First is uh, the size of the project. I think it's uh, as we I, I think the uh, question was one of the question earlier. Uh, we should uh, we should have the optimal mix of projects. And ideally, the size of the project uh, should go up. So, this, from a scale point of view, if you're doing a 500 crore project, we should ideally go to 1,000 crore project and 1,500 crore project. When you do scale projects, automatically you have the ability to uh, leverage a lot of common overhead, fixed costs, etc. Uh, and that's something that we are consciously doing across all the three markets and. Uh, I have clear thresholds of what is the right project looks like. If it is smaller than that, then we should be, there has to be a very strong strategic reason, otherwise we should not do it. Because economically, it will put some of the constraints that touched upon. So that's one. And then the second part on the cost side, I think the volatility is a, is a challenge in our business because our price gets logged in upfront and cost we have to endure for the four years before we deliver. So it's extremely important for us to manage our cost of construction really smartly. And one of the things that we have seen, and we are trying to bring the manufacturing mindset into our project mindset, project operation, is how do we do the standardization? So standardization of, let's say, apartment sizes, standardization of building layouts, standardization of MEP, standardization of parking lot, standardization of components, standardization of all the finishes, and um, these are things that are typically seen at a very high level of sophistication in, let's say, manufacturing industry. In projects, everything becomes bespoke and, um, and, and it's not industrialized at all. So with the help of uh, my colleagues, especially Jitesh and, and, and Viral, Jitesh leads design and uh, Viral does marketing, uh, we are saying that how do we standardize uh, our product so much so that uh, it allows us the efficiency in the constructed area to the, the r and area that, um, that you, you don't want to construct too much uh, for the same amount of r and which is where the selling happens. So these two things I just want to add to what Vimal said to make sure that we are able to, one on the, on the size of the project, we are increasingly trying to take it up. And then the biggest driver of profitability is the ratio of r and versus construction area, how do we standardize and reduce and get the efficiencies on the cost side? Thanks for the detailed reply. It was very helpful. Uh, second thing was on, it is slightly longer question. Can you give an idea of how is the capital relocation strategy evolving? In what? Uh, because in our presentation on the ambitious goal slide, we have stated that uh, we are working on a lot of six seven factors, okay, or the six factors. And what does it all mean? Okay? And how does the bold ambition that you are elaborating, does it mean on customer segments, products? And what are becoming down with experience more no-go areas for us? Or we would have seen that these are the things which we, have, which we used to do in historically. But I think... Uh, the return ratios do not need for us. So that is one part on capital allocation. And secondly, how does the PRE change and the organization structure or model change based on what you are trying to achieve? And uh, or the bottom, how is this uh, evolution impacting or positive development is happening, let's say, uh, on the people front and uh, capital allocation and their PRE. Yeah. Just some thoughts on that will be helpful. So, you asked a great question. I'm glad you touched upon. I'll try to be brief here because it's a, it's a question that requires longer, more detailed answer. But let me just try to give a uh, summary on both the points that you raised. Um, uh, the, the aspiration that we have set up uh, requires a very healthy GDP. Uh, to be created over the next uh, five years, four and a half years. So anything between 40 to 50,000 crore of GDP needs to be there for sub to supporting our 8 to 10K scale-up that we have. Um, now, 
the way to pursue this is very important that we don't do uh, and, and this will be spread across let's say Mumbai, Pune as well as uh, as well as Bangalore. Uh, the size of the project I touched upon earlier will be different like mega project, category A, category B, category C. But there's another important angle of the type of the deal. Is it a society redevelopment? Is it a joint development? Or is it an outright purchase that we have? Each of these things will have a different uh, capital requirements. Um, because, you know, you know, when, you know, in case of let's say the Navy, we don't need to put capital till very late after the registration is done. You do a little bit of marketing spend, but now and then very quickly you can launch. But when you're doing outright land purchase, you have to make sure that you spend all the money up front. Um, and then it takes anywhere from, you know, nine to 12 months to bring those projects into the market. Um, so those are the ways, you know, we estimate the size of capital required to support our growth aspirations. But one of the fundamental principles that required for us to commit to any of these is the, the financial return. So this is something that I have started to push internally that whatever you do, Himanshu, what happens is there is always a dilution of some, from the cost point of view or, or some other reasons or uh, IRRs get diluted because of time as well as, uh, let's say, cost overrun. So how do we actually make sure that we factor that in our financial analysis when we do the underwriting for the beam? And that's the, the capital allocation is based on the principle of what's the, what's the theoretical uh, IRR, but also the realistic IRR when we finish the project. So we are very careful and now disciplined about keeping both these into account as we plan for the project. And that is non-negotiable because uh, it's critical that what we say at the time of underwriting and what we deliver at the time of possession uh, and reflect on economics needs to be very close to each other. Now to do that, the, the second part of the question is your KRA. In the past, we had a very functional organization. Uh, and in the last uh, few months, we have started to change that. You'll see in our investor presentation, we have introduced uh, uh, the concept of chief business officer for even our residential business. For IC, we had the um, uh, Raj, who's our chief business officer for industrial. But uh, now we have Vimlendra Singh. He's the uh, chief business officer for residential, um, south, uh, west, and north. Uh, and we have uh, uh, Ashwin as the chief business officer uh, for, uh, for south, uh, especially Bangalore, and we have a lot of uh, projects in Chennai in our world city as well. This is uh, this is critical because then you have end-to-end -end accountability. What you say in underwriting and what you deliver, you have the full responsibility. And this is also required from a scale-up point of view. Now they can have a regional all structure that allows us to work towards scaling that Mumbai, Mumbai or Pune or or Bangalore specifically. And beyond these changes in the organization, we are also bringing people in to make sure that they are able to support our scale-up aspiration from just from a hands and legs perspective and, and the quality of support required. Um, so I just wanted to keep it short. I'm happy to discuss in more detail, but this is how we're thinking about the capital location and how we're thinking about the KRAs and the organizational bandwidth required to support the scale-up. Okay, thanks. Sir. And one small thing, Origins Endeavor is taking a lot more time okay, uh, than what was in this charge, okay? Any specific uh, thoughts you have, or uh, uh, what what is the progress on that? The, yeah. the Imagine said uh, uh, Amdavad, right? Origin Amdavad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so uh, see, uh, we have uh, we talked about that we are ready to. So two of them. We are either either looking for a large anchor customer. We don't want to do a small one acre, two acre deal. Or we also uh, shared our aspiration to even exit that if we, you know, if you find the right buyer. Um, the thing that I don't want to do, I want to do a five sale. Um, I think this land parcel is, you know, I would say moderately attractive. Uh, it will become attractive in the next three to five years, given how the utilization of our land parcel around that, and even the competition from the uh, government park. Um, but I don't want to do a fire sale because it has value. Um, and hopefully we'll find the right uh, partner, right customer over the next few next few years. So that's uh, that we are open to get an anchor customer, largest or exit completely uh, for the right, but don't want to do a fire sale. 
ओके थैंक यू फ्रॉम माई साइड थैंक यू पार्टिसिपेंट्स यू मेंस स्टार इन वन टू आस्क क्वेश्चन नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज फ्रॉम दुहान ऑफ श्रेयांश मेहता फ्रॉम इकोर सिक्योरिटी प्लीज गो एंड या थैंक्स फॉर द अपॉर्चुनिटी so my first question is on candidly loan so is it only the timing you know which we are looking or is it also dependent on uh, some approvals you know which might come in uh, so i think we are waiting for the normal set of approvals uh, so uh, it's not a question of if uh, uh, shreyas if you are trying to say if candidly will get launched it's a question of when and this okay. part of routine approval that we seek from uh, all the relevant authorities so that's going on Uh, as soon as those are clear including the rera approval then we can launch and uh, that seems uh, we have to re uh, uh, redesign our timelines a little bit given some of the changes that happened but right now we are looking uh, good on those revised timelines got it got it got it sure so secondly on in terms of uh, the you know the launches which you li- lined up say 2500 3000 or crore gdp and the way you know one h has panned out Fair to assume, you know, we'll be crossing the 2300, 2400 pre-sales mark for this year. I think, Vimal, you are to. Uh, uh, I think uh, pre-sales number we are not given for this financial year. We have to given for next financial year, uh, 2500 uh, pre-sales from Resi, and roughly 500 uh, from next uh, uh, from the IC side. That's for the next uh, F25. um and uh, i will uh, stay uh, in those guardrails to talk about what we have planned for next year um i will continue to update you on quarterly basis how our uh, pipeline is looking forward so you have a good comfort on uh, how the business is scaling up got it got it sure sure and so lastly on as far as our bd of 5000 6000 or crores is concerned can you break it in terms of mumbai and specifically in terms of redevelopment Yeah, so so let me just say so typically um, the just a split wise I'll give you overall split. My thumb rule is 60-20-20, 60% from Mumbai, 20% from Bangalore, and 20% from Pune. Um, okay. Now that's the typical. The redevelopment part uh, is something that I am constantly evaluating. Uh, they need to meet uh, the guardrail that we have uh, in terms of size, in terms of location, in terms of the number of members in the society uh, the 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 kind of other commercial return that we can get from the the fresh sale all those are extremely important uh, but as as we go forward we also have uh, the 60 20 ratio split into vertical versus horizontal versus other models so that's we are but we are those are ways to you know provide returns to our shareholders i always looking for is this a good project for us um from a brand perspective from a customer perspective and then does it provide commercial return to our shareholders sure 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 and then lastly any update on origins pune uh, when can uh, we see that coming into pipeline it this will uh, so we uh, f25 will be launching pune based on the, the latest estimate that we have uh, we are uh, we had uh, three issues there uh, one issue was about access road we have made a strong progress in the last uh, last quarter uh, the second issue is contiguity is a swiss cheese problem uh, so we are working with our partners there to make sure that the swiss cheese problem is addressed and then there are certain approvals that we need to because some new rules came up with respect to a forestation etc that we are in the process of uh, uh, sorting out so those are three things uh, all of those are uh, exciting what's good about uh, we call it origins pune op is that uh, it's very close to pune the huge amount of interest that we are already seeing about uh, uh, from prospect customers prospective investors so hopefully as soon as we have solved all these three issues we'll be able to get the launch done in a shorter period of time got it got it thanks and all the best that's it from my side thank you thank you friend thank you Participants, you may press star and one to ask the question. Next question is from line of Ronald Sioni from Share Khan Limited. Please go ahead. Yeah. Good morning, sir. Uh, you know, I had just one question with respect to Citadel Phase Two launch. You know, if you can touch upon uh, how the project's uh, response was there and 
you know, versus the phase one, how, what kind of pricing did you see? You know, whether you have you seen any change in the footfalls or conversion ratios? So, you know, just on the whole Citadel phase two launch. Uh, so, let me share a few things, uh, Ronald, and let me just uh, keep some more excitement for our next call. Uh, the reason is very, very, very important time for us. Uh, we launched it only like uh, five days back, right, 25th, and it was a metaverse and this drone um, show that we talked about. We have received a lot of EOI. Um, um, the pricing is competitive. We have a very strong micro market understanding of who the competition is, what they offer, and how can our price value equ uh, equation is going to be stronger than our competitors, given us an extremely uh, nice, um, I would say, location. Uh, and as we had done very well in phase one, I think we want to take it phase two to the next level. These are larger apartments, uh, three and four BHKs, very well designed, I must say. Uh, and it's a premium offering that we are providing there. So the market pricing is in line with uh, uh, in line with the price value equation and the competitive information, competitive set that we have. Uh, the the roughly I think close to 300 units uh, have been launched as part of this, um, and we will have more uh, open up as um, as we see the response. Uh, but uh, we are hoping for a super duper response from this. In in the last five days itself, we have seen very healthy EOIs already. Uh, let me just stop at that. Um, hopefully, we'll have more to share in the next call. And on the footfall fronts, like whether, you know, footfalls have been uh, higher than, you know, previous launches or, you know, there has been some uh, lower footfalls or what kind of interest in terms of footfalls have been there? Um, uh, you know, early days, because just one weekend we've had, uh, that too with the uh, Cricket World Cup going on. Uh, yeah. So uh, the uh, footfalls are healthy. Uh, they are uh, much stronger than what we saw in the past. And this was much anticipated. Uh, but I think I care more about conversion. Um, so I think uh, the response from CP has been outstanding, let me tell you that. And if that is an indicator of uh, how the, uh, the three sales will stack out, I think we have good news in store for all of us. Thank you very much, sir. Best. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. As there are no further questions, I will now hand the conference over to Mr. Amit Sinha for closing comments. Very good. Thank you uh, to everybody, all the participants. It's, uh, uh, I just want to uh, thank all of your support, uh, listening to us, but also supporting us from uh, from outside as we as we build our business, as we scale our business. Um, as I touched upon the industry, this is a purple patch for the industry. Uh, we have seen strong pre-sales momentum, more on the sustainable side. Um, our launches are more of the launches that we had planned are happening in the the, the H2 of this financial year, and some of the still large size launches are planned in this uh, second half of this financial year. Our business development effort continues to be healthy in line with our aspirations of scale-up that we talked in the last quarter. ICIC business, a bit subdued in H1, but it's a lumpy business. We'll see... Uh, the more the LOI that we have, the pipeline that we have, should get converted in the uh, in the uh, in the H2. Uh, so so hoping uh, we have more news to share on that front. And the financials, as you know, uh, we'll continue to work on that. You'll have the much better uh, uh, the, the the financial uh, details as we finish the financial, given the lumpiness of this industry uh, and the revenue recognition method that exists. Uh, thanks a lot again for all your support, and look forward to. Um, uh, to, to speaking again, and best wishes to all of you for the uh, for this, uh, the Shara Diwali and the festivities. Thank you, sir. On behalf of Mahindra Lifespace Developers Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us. You may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.